What is compliance and why do we comply? Compliance means fulfilling someone's direct request. Social psychologists have identified numerous techniques used by influencers, the ones making the request. Six of them are listed here, including mindlessness, the reciprocity norm, the foot in the door technique, the door in the face technique, lowballing, and the that's not all technique. The strategy that an influencer chooses will depend on their relationship with the target, their social status, personality, and culture, as well as the nature of the request. Let's learn more about each of these strategies and the research behind them on the next slides. Mindlessness is a state of not fully using the conscious mind, and it can make us more vulnerable to compliance. The way a request is phrased makes a difference. For instance, talking fast, catching people off guard, and providing a reason, even if it's a terrible one, can improve compliance. In one study, the experimenter approached people who were using a copying machine and asked to cut in line. In one condition, the request was phrased with no reason and 60% of participants complied. In the second condition, the experimenter paired the request with a justifiable reason, because I'm in a rush. 94% of participants complied. And in the third condition, the experimenter provided an irrelevant reason. May I use the copying machine because I have to make some copies? Still, 93% of participants complied. The researchers concluded that participants in this condition were on automatic pilot when they mindlessly responded to this third request. They were not fully processing all the words they heard. The norm of reciprocity is a social norm that says we should treat others as they have treated us. When someone gives us a gift, for example, we may feel a bit obligated to return the favor. If it's a surprise, our first words might be, thank you, but I'm sorry, I didn't get you anything. When someone smiles at us, we might feel obligated to smile back. When someone asks us for a favor, we probably expect them to reciprocate at some point. Influencers use this technique to get us to repay them for unsolicited acts of kindness. Maybe you've received something from a nonprofit organization in the mail, a free pen, free notepad, or free return address labels. These organizations hope that you'll feel obligated to repay them with a donation or referral. The next strategy is the foot in the door technique. First, the influencer makes a small request that the target is likely to comply with. Then, they make a larger request, the real one. For example, we might ask a friend, will you buy this snack for me? They'll likely comply, and then, we make the real request and ask for some money to buy groceries. According to self-perception theory, this strategy works because their compliance with the initial request alters their self-perceptions, leading them to believe they are helpful people. When they hear the second request, they're already thinking of themselves as helpful, and they're likely to comply to maintain consistency with their self-image in that moment. In the 1960s, Jonathan Friedman and Scott Fraser called a large sample of female homemakers in California. In one condition, the experimenters made a very intrusive request. They asked if the women would allow strangers to go through their household products for a few hours to take an inventory of the household products they buy. Only 22% of participants complied. In the other condition, the experimenters used the foot-in-the-door technique and first asked women if they would be willing to answer some questions about the household products they buy. Three days later, the experimenters called the women back to make the intrusive request. Surprisingly, compliance nearly doubled to 53%. Results like these have been replicated again and again. We're more likely to donate money, time, food, and blood when we first complied with a smaller initial request. The door-in-the-face technique is similar, but the steps are reversed. The influencer begins with an outrageous initial request, one that is so extreme it will surely be rejected, at which point they make the real request, one that is much smaller and more reasonable. Take a moment to read the comic strip on this slide.
The main character asks his mother if he can set fire to his mattress. Of course, she rejects his request, at which point he asks for a cookie, using the door in the face technique. Unfortunately for him, it didn't work in this situation, but social psychologists have plenty of evidence to show it can be very effective. Sheldini and colleagues asked college students if they would supervise a group of juvenile delinquents on a field trip to the zoo. Only 17% of them agreed. Then, they asked a second group of students if they would volunteer two hours per week, without pay, at a counseling center for juvenile delinquents for two years. Everyone declined, at which point the experimenter followed up with the more modest request to supervise the zoo trip. A whopping 50% said yes. Fortunately, most participants did in fact show up to supervise, just as they had promised. Lowballing is another two-step technique. First, the influencer presents their request, and once the target complies, the influencer reveals additional hidden costs, which increases the size of the request. In another study, Shildini and colleagues asked students if they would be willing to participate in a research study for extra credit. Half of them were told up front that they needed to arrive at 7 a.m. 31% showed up. The other half of them were lowballed and not told what time to arrive until after they had already agreed to volunteer. 56% of them showed up, quite a difference from the first condition. There are several explanations for why it works. One is that we become more and more committed to the agreement during the negotiation phase. Two is that we feel obligated to fulfill our commitment to the first request. Finally, the that's not all technique. First, the influencer inflates their initial request and then seemingly decreases it with a discount or bonus. They end up where they need to end up, but the target sees something valuable, an apparent deal. In the 1980s, Burger sold cupcakes to students on campus. Some customers were told the price was 75 cents, and 44% of them made a purchase. Other customers were initially told the price was $1, but before they could even respond, the researcher discounted the cupcake to 75 cents. Under these conditions, 73% of them bought a treat. Knowing more about these compliance techniques can help you in at least two ways. First, you could master them and use them to influence others. Two, you could practice identifying their use by others and learn how to resist their attempts. In the next part of the lecture, you'll learn about yet another form of social influence, obedience.